Good evening. The other night, Christina proposed to us that men spoke more than women and even outlined some theories as to why that was so. Tonight, I will not only demonstrate that the argument did not advance the proposition, uh, but also that females generally do talk more than males, and regardless of the social theories outlined in Christine's argument, women actually have a talk of nature. <coughs> the supporting claims I'll, I'll cover tonight is, number one, the evidence is the ar the evidence in the argument was insubstantial. Number two, studies show that females talk more than males. And number three, women's biology in fact supports the notion that they have a talk of nature. Number one, the evidence in the argument that men talk more than women was not substantial. According to the very same work that Christine based her argument on, an article titled Men Talk More Than Women Do by Andrea Thompson, and I quote, on the average, we're finding a slight trend toward men being more talkative than women, end quote. The actual research himself, the psychologist Campbell Reaper, um, stated that, and I quote, one gender isn't inherently more talkative than the other, it's just that a lot of times it depends on the situation and general influence. <coughs> Christine covered these theories on why men supposedly talk more than women, but didn't provide strong evidence that the reality was following the theory. In other words, that men talk more than women. Number two, studies show that on average, females indeed talk, speak more than males. As Yale graduate medical doctor Luann Brizendine, a neuropsychiatrist, points out in her book, The Female Brain, and I quote, on average, girls speak two or three times more words per day than boys. She goes on to say that, and I quote, young girls speak earlier, and by the age of 20 months have double or triple the number of words in the vocabularies than do boys. Even when boys catch up, they don't in speed. Given that we're living in modern times, I decided to uh, look at phone use trends. In a survey conducted by Singular Wireless, a uh, company I'd imagine um, makes big business decisions based on their surveys, found that, and I quote, women use a home phone more, logging an average 471 minutes a month, while men use it 274 minutes. So that's almost twice the amount consistent with person nine's claim. Number three, women are biologically designed to talk more. <laughs> Guys, you're going to hate me for this, but, but um, <laughs> when uh, we were in the fetus, we all had a female brain, essentially. However, there's a pivotal moment at the eighth week. And in that eighth week, as Brittany and I put down the book, and I quote, as a huge testosterone surge beginning in the eighth week will turn this unisex brain male by killing off some cells in the communication centers and growing more cells in the sex and aggression centers. This surge does not occur in the female brain, allowing the female brain to go unperturbed. Because of this, as Bresden points out, I quote, the fetal girl's brain cells sprout more connections in the communication centers and areas that process emotion. And because of her larger communication center, this girl will grow up to be more talkative than her brother. She goes on to say, I quote, in most social contexts, she will use many more forms of communication than he will. I find this fascinating. Well, before I get to that, you know, Professor, since we just found that women have an edge on the communications, I think um, we have to speak on behalf of all men. We deserve extra credit. Because we like that. <laughs> At any rate, even in the nature of our primate cousins, the rhesus monkeys, we see that females talking with the males. Reason I state that, and I quote, female rhesus monkeys learn to vocalize much earlier than the males and use every one of the 17 vocal tones of their species every day, all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Continue, male rhesus monkeys, by contrast, learn only three to six tones, and once they're adults, they'll go for days or even weeks without vocalizing at all. So you see, not only was the argument uh, undermined by the irrelevance of, of the, um, or the insignificance of the argument, but we see that females indeed talk more as nature intended them to. And as, a, as uh, anyway, if after all this, Christine, you still believe that men talk more than women, I'd be glad to take you out on a weekend and listen to you firsthand that <laughs> I, will, I don't do much of the talking. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
That'd be great ending. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody's going to enjoy that summary. <laughs> uh, I thought you did a very good job following the structure. You, uh, you kind of explained what the premise of your argument is. It basically comes down to that the advocate's information is insufficient and then there's good information that suggests alternative conclusions. I'm not sure that uh, your <coughs> challenge to the uh, evidence being slight on the advocate's part was as convincing as it could be, but what was convincing was all the counterclaim evidence that you had and your explanations for it I thought was a were a little bit more thorough uh, than uh, some of the arguments presented by the advocate. It's also um, you know, very clearly explained in the process and it's delivered effectively despite the fact that you've got all that testosterone in your brain and you killed off your communication cells. All right. Thank you all very much. You guys have a good